as many of you know who follow my channel, who follow my life, know what's going on, I am currently living in Mexico. Southern Mexico. Hot Mexico. Not all of Mexico is hot, but where we live in particular, the heat is pretty brutal. So, uh, yes, that's where we live. That's what we're contending with right now. This week, we have temperatures um, upwards of 114 degrees. So, it's very difficult for me. I don't go outside much, especially when it's this hot. Unfortunately, we have year-round summer season here. It doesn't ever seem to be spring or fall and definitely not winter. In December, we sometimes get some cooler weather just for a few days. Um, maybe in the upper 70s, that's about as cool as it gets. So anyway, the point that I'm trying to make here is that it's hot. And it goes with the, this, the whole topic, the whole episode, is that why did we choose to move to this country? Why did we leave the United States? Some things I won't talk about why, but let's just talk about the positive side. We hoped that by coming here, we could start new. We, we didn't have much money left in the United States. I, I've talked about this many times before that I've had dwindling book sales and all that. I'm not going to get into that again. You can go into my past episodes um, here or on my podcast where there are a lot more episodes than on my YouTube channel. Um, in fact, a lot of the episodes that I've deleted from my YouTube channel are still on my Spotify account. Um, just not with video. So if you're ever wanting to go back and find something that I said before, you like, I know she had a video about that, but the video is gone. You can still find it on my Spotify. And the reason why I took a lot of the stuff down off of my YouTube channel was because I wanted my YouTube channel to be more positive. And I did a lot of complaining before about the electricity situation here, which is still an ongoing thing and the heat and et cetera, et cetera. So back to the point, we moved here um, December of 2021 and it has been very rough from the day that we got here. And uh, like I mentioned, the biggest issue has been the electricity situation but when the electricity goes off, it's not just for like an hour or 30 minutes or something. Um, it typically goes off between four and 20 hours. So sometimes we can go a couple of weeks without it going off that long, but then when it starts to, to do it, it's like every three days. So it's a pretty difficult situation to come to terms with. It is very, very difficult because it is so hot. Now, if we lived in an environment like when I lived in Arkansas, where we had four seasons out of the year instead of one, like we do here, uh, you know, I could, I could fare well without uh, having electricity even for days on end. I mean, we even did it when I was a child, and we sometimes had to go without electricity because my mom couldn't pay the bill. So it's nothing new to me. Um, but being in a place where it is so hot that you actually feel like you're suffocating from the heat, or like the other day it went out for 21 hours and it was 110 degrees outside, and I felt sick. It, it's actually started to affect my health. So when I complain, it's not just because I'm this prim and proper girl that needs this luxury called electricity. No, it's that my body is used to a certain temperature and being exposed to heat for long periods of time has is affecting me and my health. So the point of the whole episode. The reason why I'm talking about all of this stuff, just kind of catching you up to speed, is that we still, after two years, are unsure of our purpose here in Mexico. 
we're not sure what God wants us to do. But I am pretty sure with my whole heart that he sent us here for either a reason or more than one. That I am sure of. And the reason that I am so confident is because before I left, I was terrified of coming here. Number one, I was terrified of getting on an airplane. It's a fear that has dominated my life for so long. I have missed great opportunities to uh, go to, I think it was Scotland and Turkey and Brazil and France because I won an award um, from a book that I wrote in France. I was offered all of these great opportunities, paid vacation, paid trips to go to these other countries in the world, and I turned them down because of my fear of flying. So the thought of just willingly getting on an airplane and coming to Mexico to, to live with my husband, yeah, it, it was just not something that appealed to me, but I knew I had to do it. And so I remember praying to God earnestly and just asking him, if we were not meant to go to Mexico, please don't let us go. Don't let me get on that plane. And instead of continuing to be fearful, when I prayed that prayer, the fear, this lifetime fear that I had of flying just lifted from me out of nowhere. It, it, it's so hard to describe because it, it, even though it sounds simple enough, it didn't feel simple enough. So it's just difficult to describe how miraculous this was for me because I had such an intense fear my whole life of flying. So that in itself made me believe that God wanted us to come here. And also the fact that I was just terrified of coming here anyway, whether it was on a plane or going across the border or whatever the case may be, I was afraid of packing up our lives and all, you know, leaving most of our stuff behind and bringing what we could here and to start over in a new life, in a country that I've never been in, um, in uh, a culture that I had never experienced before and um, around people that I don't even speak the same language. But I, I began to feel this excitement and uh, the determination to come here. All of my fears, my worries and concerns lifted from my heart when I prayed to God. So even to this day, over two years later, and nothing has happened for us yet, and we've been through so much, We've had so much trouble here, not just with the electricity, but the water situation is very difficult. It's not like it is in the United States where you just go and you pay the deposit. A guy comes out, turns your water on for you, and it just magically flows from the faucets and you can even drink from it. It's not like that here. We have to go uh, weekly to buy water and we, you know, we have to have a, a truck. It was a good thing we, we drove a truck here um, because it has to be something big enough to carry the water in these big containers in from the, the source of the water. And then we have to bring it here and you know, use a, a water pump to filter it onto another container on our roof. And that is only the water that we use to wash clothes and dishes and cleaning and taking showers and such, but it's not clean, clean water. You cannot drink it. So on top of that, the drinking water is totally different. It comes in smaller um, water containers and we have to go into town sometime to get that water. So that's very difficult. There's just so many little things. I'm, I won't get into all of it because it will seem like I'm just complaining and I'm, I'm not trying to complain. I'm just trying to um, show you our living situation so that I can talk about the, the whole point the, the, of this episode is that it is very, very difficult here. And we have so many times just felt like 
we're just going to drop everything and go back to the United States, which is very risky. I won't get into the reasons why, but uh, it's, it's not something we, we ever want to have to do. We don't want to be forced to have to do that. And, but also, we, you know, we don't have any more money. So the living, even living in the United States would be difficult for us because uh, we would have bills and things that we don't have here. So there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages to both places. But yes, but as far as money, we, we would not be able to afford to live there. We would have to pay uh, insurance on vehicles. We would have to have, a, you know, we would have to pay um, certain permits and stuff to bring the vehicles that we have here over to the United States. And then um, it's just, there's so many things. Like I said, there's a lot of bills that we would have to pay there that we don't have to pay here generally. And so, yes, it would be difficult either way. And so we have wondered since we've been here, he's been working very, my husband has been working very hard on trying to further his boxing career, but it's been very fruitless. It's not going anywhere for him. And the same with me, I have tried several different projects to generate an income because the income that we have is so very little that it is a little scary, but we do, we trust in God, we have faith in God. We know that he's not gonna bring us here into this situation and just leave us hanging. We already know that he's going to provide and he has been providing. And regardless of how difficult it is to live here, we live still in such comfort in this, in this small studio space. It's clean. We have a refrigerator. We have all other appliances, washer, dryer, stove. And we have, um, we have a lot of things that a lot of people around here don't have. So we, even though everything is difficult, we are also living in comfort compared to the other people in, in this area. But we don't know our purpose. We, we, I've talked about this individually in a, in a recent episode called My Elusive Purpose. But this is also, this particular episode is not just centered around me, it's centered around my husband and me and our purpose here in Mexico as a married couple and we were not sure what we're doing. I'm gonna talk about one thing that did happen that was amazing to me and I still in the back of my mind believe it, but let me explain really quick. So before I left for Mexico back in 2021, I had started thinking about how I wanted to build like a little church or a prayer, just a prayer house, something where people could go and pray and uh, just be alone with God, or just a little church. And but you know, a lot of problems come into that because um, number one, I do not speak Spanish, and even though I'm I'm trying to to learn Spanish, and it's it's so very complicated to just learn another language when you're already almost 50 years old and you have so many things going on, so much stress in your life. On top of that, for me, I, I've had um, a really bad concussion back in 2022, I think it was. Yes, it was in 2022 when we lived in Ciudad del Carmen. I banged the back of my head on a concrete wall and I had a concussion for three weeks. It was a terrible, terrible experience. And I really probably should have gone to the hospital. I probably even have a skull fracture. Um, I don't know, but there was no hospital near here that I'm not gonna get into all that. That's another thing that's difficult here. It's kind of scary is our, is the hospital situation. But I didn't go to the hospital and I've all, and I also had another concussion because I hit my the front of my head on the winch on the window in the car one day, and it was a slightly milder concussion, but I know it was because it felt similar, but not anywhere near as bad as the first time. 
But the point I'm trying to make here is that I have memory problems. I, I just, I, I don't think as quick as I used to. I have trouble remembering things that were so easy for me to remember before, like uh, actresses' names, or um, we would be watching a random movie and we would see some actor that you never see, and I'm like, oh, he, he played in this movie, or this movie, or that movie. Or, you know, just things that I used to never have a problem with and that I was very quick to answer. And I, I don't have that anymore. And it could also be due to I'm getting older and, you know, my hormones are, are interfering with my memory and all of these things that are not helping me as far as learning Spanish. It's, it's just very hard. And um, even if I sat down and applied myself every single day for an hour, it would still take me several, many years to be able to be fluent enough to speak to people about God and speak to uh, anybody in a way that I would need to speak to them in order to get my point across. That is how limited my Spanish is. I do not have any conversational Spanish skills. I know Spanish words, but I have absolutely 0% conversational skills. So if that is a purpose for me, if that is something that God wanted me to do or us to do was start a little church, then it would need to be my husband doing the preaching. On top of that, I now, I am a believer in women not leading churches. I just, I, it says it in the Bible. I, I am, I feel that way. I don't feel, I'm not saying that women can't minister to other women. I just feel like to lead a church and to minister to men and to be the, the head of the church is a man's position. And, um, yeah, but, you know, say I wanted to start a little church for, for women and help women. Um, but I really can't do that because I don't speak the language here. So let me get back to really quick what made me believe that, something that happened to make me believe that this is something that God might want us to do here. Um, like I said, before we left, I had thought about doing it. I, I was really excited about the idea. I felt that God put that on my heart. And then the strangest thing happened. When we were here about two years ago, well, about a year and a half ago, we were, tr we were driving um, somewhere over toward the very far east of Mexico. I, I can never remember the name of the town, but we were driving there. And my husband and I were talking about what is our purpose here? I started talking to him about, you know, wanting to do a little church. And then just out of the blue, I got a text message from a friend of mine in Arkansas, a very sweet lady. Uh, she just, you know, we text each other every now and then and, and she loves the Lord. She goes to church. She's, she's a, all about the Lord. And she texts me at that moment out of nowhere and said, you know, maybe God wants you to start a church in Mexico, you know, to reach people who might not be able to hear the word of God. And I thought, wow, that is so weird. And I texted her back immediately and I said, I was just talking about that with my husband. We were wondering what God wanted us to do. And then you send me this text message. It was really amazing. It was one of those coincidental, I'm quoting with my fingers if you're listening on Spotify, it's one of those coincidental things that you know is not a coincidence. It's just too extraordinary to be a coincidence. And I don't really believe in coincidences, especially not big ones, little ones, you know, that happen here and there. I, I can believe that. But those big ones, those miraculous ones, the ones that make your jaw drop on the floor, I don't believe in those. I believe that's the hand of God. So, yes, I believe that it is something to do with a church or a prayer house or me ministering to women and helping women. Um, I don't know. But for the simple fact that that happened, 
and how it happened, it makes me believe that. So then there's another thing that I, I really got it on my heart one day that, and it, I was even in tears thinking about it, was being able to adopt a child or children. And I just, I started, I felt so full of emotion with this idea because as such a large part of me is um, very disappointed in myself with how I raised my, my, my own three children. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they, they turned out great. They all uh, graduated high school. They're not problem children. They weren't problem children for the most part. You know, every, everybody has their little issues and things, but they turned out really good. They turned out like re they're really good people and they're compassionate and caring and kind and respectful. And, you know, you would say, well, what more could you ask for? You know, all three of, all three of my, my children uh, graduated high school, even though I raised them by myself with very little uh, child support ever, hardly ever received a child support check. And it was just me and my kids. And I, I don't think I did a, a very bad job, but I didn't raise them on the word of God. And I'm really disappointed in myself because I had many opportunities to do that when they were younger. And I just, I let the enemy detract me. I let him distract me and to deter me. And, and he won in that aspect. And, and so now um, I just feel a lot of regret for not being able to raise my children the way that I would now if I could do it over. So the thought of adopting just filled me with, with joy. And I, I, it was one of those moments where you feel like this is something God wants me to do. And then after a, a few months and some things happened here, I won't get into those things, but the desire to do that just kind of fell away to the side. It's not that I don't, I wouldn't still do it, but I'm not as passionate or joyful about the thought as I once was. And that's the same as for the church or the prayer house. And another thing that um, I thought, well, maybe God wants me to do is to teach the children here how to speak English. And that is something that we're still considering, but the only, there's, there's problems with everything. Uh, number one, like I said in the beginning of this video, it's too hot for me, I don't even go outside. Um, I, I just feel like I would be out there trying to teach children how to speak English and I would be melting or having a heat stroke. And this isn't just somebody complaining, oh, it's hot. I am literally telling you it's so hot that it can make me have a heat stroke. So, you know, have a bunch of kids and, you know, it's, it's just... It's difficult. Everything we try to do is come, presents with like huge problems. And the first thing I do all the time is I pray about it. I pray for the problem to go away or to be fixed. I pray for, you know, guidance or clarity on how to maneuver around problems so that we can do things. Um, I pray, of course, for financial um, help and just for showing us the way, showing us what he wants us to do. And so far, unlike the rest of my life, most, for the most part, when it comes to this particular thing about our purpose here in Mexico, my prayers have gone unanswered and so have my husband's. So we're, we're just kind of at a standstill. We're not sure what he wants us to do. We're not sure why we came here. And another thing that we are just very uncertain about is if we're in the right spot because so many things go wrong here. We have put so much money into our, our other studio or like we were trying to build a bigger house. I want to say house, but it's a small house, not a big house, something bigger than this one room studio. And we put money into that. We've put money into this studio uh, to make it more livable because it was not completely livable when we first got here. 
We've also put money into the gym, which we were going to use as a, you know, a gym and also possibly the church and other things that all these different ideas that we've had. Like I said before, my husband's been working so hard on his boxing career and it's been fruitless. And I've been working hard on books and projects and other things, uh, YouTube channels, podcasts, uh, side projects. And again, nothing, nothing is happening. Nothing seems to be like, this is what I'm supposed to do, or this is what we're supposed to do together. So we're at a standstill. We are unsure about where to go, if to stay here, whether or not to leave or to stay. We're unsure if we should continue working on this or to stop one thing and start working on something else because everything we try, nothing produces a result. And then it just leads me to wonder, does God want us to stay here? or does he want us to relocate to another area in Mexico? Um, or are we just not being patient? And that could very well be the answer. And that, that a good example of that is the story of Abraham and Sarah, where they, you know, they wanted a child and uh, they just weren't getting it fast enough. So they decided to take matters into their own hands and Abraham had sex with his servant and I think her name was Hagar and they had a child and then just complications. And they should have just waited. They should have waited and we wonder if we should just wait and be patient and let the thing happen, let the, the the answers come to us and just we need to practice patience but as anyone knows an impatient person practicing patience is very difficult but at this point that's really all that we can do because we've tried so many different things we've used what money that we brought here already it's it's gone. We don't have any more money. We're just living day by day, month by month. And um, we're not struggling. We're not suffering. You know, we have groceries. We um, are able to put gas in our vehicle, those kinds of things. I'm not saying we're suffering financially. I'm just saying that we don't have the money to do anything else. We don't have the money to continue building on our studio or other house or to continue building on the gym or to build a church. And, you know, we, there's just a lot of things that we don't have. We don't know what to do. So um, I'm just curious if, any, if anybody watching has any answers, has any uh, ideas that, you know, when it comes to a situation like this, do we wait or do we take it as a sign that nothing, since nothing is working and everything actually seems to be going in the opposite direction and life seems to be getting more difficult instead of easier and, sh or should we take all this as a sign and change our circumstances? And uh, you know, that just becomes the, the big question. Do you wait for God or is God telling you to do something else? And I think so many people go through that so maybe that is a sign that we are supposed to be doing something else that all of these ideas are not like maybe the church maybe the uh teaching children english maybe the adoption wasn't meant for this part of mexico and you know i talked about this in a previous episode where uh you know when i went to the border and went to Arkansas for a month and came back and I just said, oh, this is our home, we're not going anywhere. But you know, part of me just thinks that that was the exhaustion talking because we just went right back into our same routine and back into uh, feeling the same way that we've been feeling since we got here. So I guess it's just a lesson. It's just an update on my life, um, our life here in Mexico, what, what's going on with us, what, what we're doing, what we're not doing and um, what we're working toward. Uh, a lot of other things that I've talked about in previous videos were wanting to have a garden 
and all of these other things, but you know, we, we can't really do that, any of that stuff in this p particular studio where we live. It's just, there's no place to, to build a garden or to dig a garden outside. We could have, you know, small potters or planters, um, stuff like that, but um, it, it's just not feasible where we are. There's no space outside for hardly anything. So all of the things that I've wanted to do, even the things that I thought about doing before I came here, um, we haven't really done any of it. We've been building on things and that's as far as we've gotten, just kind of half finished things and no more money to continue the projects. So yeah, it's a little difficult. That's probably the biggest word. I should just title this episode difficult, but maybe that is just what it is. And we just need to trust God, have faith in God and just be patient and wait our turn. And I've, I've said it many times, I've had so many prayers answered, so many things, uh, I'm talking big, miraculous prayers. I would pray God would answer almost immediately. And this just is probably, our, our, probably my moment where I'm in that waiting period. And maybe God's waiting on me. Maybe he's waiting on me to show that I can be patient. Maybe he's waiting on me to, uh, show that I can be more appreciative of the, the things that we do have and the situation that we're in. And uh, it could very well be that. So I just wanted to give you all an update on the situation and at least let you know I'm in higher spirits than I normally would be talking about this kind of stuff. I don't feel down and depressed about it. I just feel a little stuck and, or a lot stuck if we're being honest. And, but the most important thing is I, I, I really feel that it will work itself out. I have faith that God is going to show us a way or make a way for us and give us the means in which to do whatever it is he wants us to do. So in the meantime, maybe pray for us. I'll be praying for you. <laughs> we all need some prayer and uh, yeah. So may God bless you, your family, and your life.